Hello and welcome back to my channel where I like to have fun with all things beauty while being critical about what I accept into my collection. Today I am doing a Sephora shop with me video. So today I am putting things in my cart and this is the stuff that I am going to check out with. First, I always start the sale with two orders. One for me, <laughs> stuff for me, and then I place a second order for gifts. So often I'm sending that to a different address, so that's why I place two separate orders. But I'm gonna start with the stuff I'm buying. So number one in my basket is a new NARS foundation. The Light Reflecting Foundation is my Holy Grail foundation. I'm gonna start with one. I'm gonna see how it goes, <laughs> and if the color isn't great, I'll pick up a second before the sale is over and use it as a mixer. Then I have the Hourglass Blush. I was really stuck between the shade Scene and Whim. So Scene is a soft warm pink and Whim is a bright pink. I do think I'm going to end up going with Scene, but if I don't love it, I am going to exchange it. <laughs> if I don't absolutely love this shade, I'm absolutely not going to keep it. These blushes are just too expensive to keep if I'm not going to use it a lot. But I've been wanting to try this formula basically ever since it came out. But, you know, I've just been holding off, frankly, because I knew this sale was coming. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to reviewing that. Then I have the Huda Beauty Icy Nude Eyeshadow Palette. I was really on the fence about this when it first came out, but I've seen a couple of reviews and I do really like the color story. Unfortunately, I have a few of her big palettes, so I feel like I own this already. Like, enough people have done comparisons with this and, you know, Rose Quartz in particular, but a few of the other palettes and the shades are just so similar that on one hand, I am afraid that I'll regret this, but I mean, if I do, I will return it. I'm not going to keep it if I don't think I'll use it. The reason I'm picking it up anyway is because these are my colors. <laughs> these are genuinely my favorite colors, so I do think that this is a good investment for me. Everything except for that pressed glitter, like I'm not a fan of pressed glitters, but the shimmers look really pretty. So I'm going to give it a shot. If there was multiple eyeshadow palettes that I wanted, I would maybe feel differently, but this is really the only one. So I am going to go ahead and purchase this. Then I have the Merit Great Skin Priming and Firming Moisturizer. I need a primer. I always need moisture. This looks right up my alley. You know, if it doesn't work out, if I have a skin reaction, I'll just return it. But from what I've seen on the ingredients list, it looks like it's gonna work out. So I'm excited to try that. So I am popping in here from the future. <laughs> so today is Wednesday, October 30th, and I am about to post my final Sephora video before the sale starts. So I just wanted to come in here and clarify my thoughts on a few things. I thought about refilming the entire video video, but honestly, I want to get this out in a timely fashion, and I mean, frankly, tomorrow's Halloween, so <laughs> I'm definitely going to be tied up tomorrow. I am somebody who marinates on this sale. I don't have endless amounts of money to spend on beauty. I am far from monetized. I don't even have enough followers for affiliate links, so <laughs> I really do take my time, and I go over my list and everything in my cart multiple times before I hit checkout, so based on that, I'm going to have thoughts about these things are right up until Friday. <laughs> so I thought I would just at least start with some of the hot ticket items. I know my lists, all of my recommendations up to this point are pretty boring. They're pretty boring because these are things that have been in my collection for a long time and have really stood the test of time and... I am very truly making my recommendations based on the things that I use the most and not just what is new and exciting. <laughs> so hopefully this video is a little bit more interesting. If you're like me and a lot of people on beauty YouTube where you do have kind of a lot of makeup and you rather hear about the new and the now. So I will just start off with the newest <laughs> and probably one of the more controversial products in this sale, which would be the Patrick Ta Eye Duos. So I keep going back and forth on these. My initial reaction was, I want to know. So I'm going to pick one up for $33, almost, well, so on sale, there are $33.60, so let's say $34. I don't think that's horrible if it's a formula that is really beautiful, high shine, high glitter impact, all of the things. I have other singles in my collection that hold that space. However, <laughs> because there are reviews on Sephora already, 
I am having a much harder time justifying it. The review photos and the reviews themselves, they're not stellar. You know, forget the price. I mean, genuinely, I will pay a premium for something that is special, but these aren't looking that special. Not only that, but each duo seems to have a different level of sparkles, like kind of by a lot. You know, at first I looked at these and I said, okay, so they're really high impact sparkle. Just go with the shade I like the best. Well, okay, so when I look at them, the shade that the shade combo that I like the best seems to have very little sparkle. And if that's the case, I don't need these shades just to have them as shades. Lord knows I have these shades a thousand times over already, so I would be getting them for the high impact finish. And if they don't have that, I don't think I can justify these. I mean, when I look at the other ones that do seem more sparkly, for me, the ones that jump out is the white and gold shimmer. I have white and gold shimmer. I have really high impact white and gold shimmer or silver or whatever. I, I own that already. I don't need it again. And the only other one that sort of stands out is like the taupey brown. But again, I have something very similar already. And that's just not my favorite color on me. So I'm sort of left feeling like the one that I was willing to compromise on, the pink duochrome, and lighter pink combo is still the only one that makes sense. But when I look at actual people swatching them, I, I just, I don't know, I'm like so disappointed. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. I wanted to grab one of these just to play with the formula. And I do, I, I think they're going to sell out. I think there's enough buzz about these and enough curiosity that they're going to sell out. Now, do I think a bunch of people are probably going to end up returning them <laughs> because they're pissed? I do. I think if these really are as lackluster as some of these photos make them look, I think people will be returning them. But that doesn't mean they're not going to sell out first. So I am much more on the fence about this than I was originally. <laughs> what I really wanted to do was go in Sephora in person and swatch them because they did release today. However, I've checked online like a couple times just to be sure and they're not in any of the stores by me. I don't know if they will be before the sale. If they are and I can get to the store in person, I will be running to the store because I want to see for myself. I want to swatch these. If I can get my hands on them, I will post a review immediately and let everyone know what I think. But I don't know. I mean, I collect a lot of shimmery things and I have a lot of shimmery eyeshadow. And from what I'm seeing, I don't even think you need to go to indie brands to get this high shine. I think there are Natasha Denona shadows that have a similar impact from what I've seen. I don't know. I just, you know, I really am of the mindset that for $34, it could be worth it, but not if they're not even that sparkly. So I don't know. I'm still on the fence. I'm not 100% sure if I'll buy one just with the caveat that I can return it. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not, but I'm definitely not thrilled <laughs> with what I've seen so far. I haven't seen any YouTube videos. I haven't seen any like really great swatches yet, but I don't know. Just the photos online have really gotten me feeling less than excited about these. So stay tuned. I will report back as soon as I know if I'm getting them or not. Another thing I wanted to bring up is I will in fact be trying the Dior Forever Skin Perfect 24-Hour Multi-Use Foundation Stick. I think I'm going to pick it up in shade 2N, but I don't know because I have the Air Flash in 2N and I don't like that color on me. I'm not sure what it is. I can't really put my finger on it, but when I got the Air Flash, I actually went ahead and bought another one in 3N, even though 3N is way too dark for me. I felt like the combination was a better color on me, so maybe I'll go with 2.5N. That might be a safer bet or the undertone could be completely different. You know, shade matching is the bane of my existence. I absolutely <laughs> struggle with that, but I'll, I'll exchange it if it doesn't work. So the curiosity got to me, and I've watched a couple more reviews on that since. So I do think I will be going ahead and picking that up. And that actually concludes my 100% list. So I have the Merit Great Skin Primer. I have the Huda Beauty Icy Nude Eyeshadow Palette. I have the Hourglass Liquid Blush. I have the Dior Skin Stick, and I have the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. That is my Holy Grail foundation. 
I'm picking it up in Patagonia. I feel like that shade's probably too dark for me, but honestly, I'm annoyed because I have Valaris and Vienna right now, both of which, like, if you look at the undertones, they should be perfect. Like, I'm looking at Vienna right now. That's light 4.5. It's light with cool undertones. It pulls yellow on me, like straight up yellow. There's nothing cool toned about it. I don't know if they're doing some kind of a weird reversal with the undertones, like MAC back in the day. I have no idea. But that color looks terrible on me. So even though I'm fairly certain that Patagonia is too deep, I'm going to start there. And if it really doesn't work, I'll buy another one before the sale's over to mix in. But anyway, that's... That's everything that's on my definite list for now again I will be actually shopping in real time on Instagram so I will post my live purchase receipts on my Instagram stories and the second they arrive I will be reviewing everything probably first on Instagram but definitely on here as soon as I physically can because I do like to get as much of that out before the sale is over as possible to help people especially when it comes to new items so that's everything that's in my definitely cart <laughs> Then in my gifting cart, I have the YSL quad. I have two of them. I have Stora dolls and I have shade 100 and shade 300 for two different people with slightly different undertones. So I'm gifting those accordingly. Then I have the Westman Atelier, the mini baby cheeks blush. I love this set because I love the variety of tones chosen. I looked at all of their gift sets and while they're all beautiful, I think this has the best variety and I really like this blush formula. This is definitely the kind of thing that I feel like people wouldn't want to buy for themselves, but it really does make a nice gift. So picking that up. And finally, I am grabbing one of the Summer Fridays, the mini neutral mini bomb set. Going to be gifting that as well. And that's it for my definite gift. I am absolutely picking up more gifts during this sale, but those are the ones that I know I'm absolutely buying for sure. Left on my loves list. So I have the Gucci Glow Powder Gel Highlighter. I feel like this keeps popping up in my YouTube reviews and everybody loves it. So I really wanted to sort of save my money and try one of the Hindash highlighters, but this is easier to get and I can get it on sale, so I don't know. I think this is definitely one, depending on how much I spend, <laughs> you know, it's gonna have to be around two purchase. It's not around one purchase, but I, whatever. I, I do really wanna try that. I have the Makeup Forever, the mini pencils on my maybe list. I don't think I'm gonna get this one though because I already have Wherever Walnut and I don't really need these other colors. So I know that that's a good value, but I won't use all the colors. I also have the LYS Beauty, the mini blushes. I have their cream compact blushes. I got that in a gift set and I really liked it. I'm sort of on the fence. I probably will skip on this because I just have too many cream blushes. Like I really can't. I have to call it quits at some point. <laughs> and finally, I have the Kofi Zari Eyes Cream Proof cream eyeshadow. I'm gonna do my best to pass on that because I don't use cream eyeshadow. I don't use pot eyeshadow. I don't use any of it. So that would be really silly even though the color is beautiful. One thing that I forgot to talk about on my maybes list is the Natasha Denona Mini Rose Eyeshadow Palette. So I heard <laughs> based on trademarks or whatever it is that she's coming out with a rose and wood palette sometime this spring maybe. That sounds right up my alley. Honestly, I love pink and brown. Like as boring as that is, as much of that as I own from Pat McGrath, I still don't hate pink and brown. So I am very attracted by the idea of that palette. Right now we just have it in a mini and I don't know. I mean, if I'm honest, I don't love the pink to gold shift in this. It immediately makes me think of NARS Orgasm, and I feel like I just have shadows like this in my collection already. I have them from Pat McGrath, and like, you can't beat Pat McGrath when it comes to quality, at least with the motherships, so I don't need that color, but I still like the rest of the palette, so I don't know. It's $27, so I don't know. 
I might pick it up. A couple of months ago, I would have said I'm definitely picking it up. Now I'm less excited by it, especially given the collection that I have, but I do always love her little five pan palettes. I mean, they're excellent quality and they're a great price. So that is another item on my maybes list. I see that the Kosas mini blushes are back in stock. So I like the colors chosen for this. I think they did a good job with butterflies, euphoria, and blist. Euphoria was the one that I was probably the most interested in when these first came out. Unfortunately, I have to be honest, I've seen some reviews recently that kind of said that these were just okay, that they're just not special. And I mean, I'm thrilled that they're powders because I think powders last longer, but I don't know. I mean, again, this is another item that a few months ago, this was an absolutely, if this came back in stock, I was grabbing it as soon as possible. Now there's a good chance that I'm still going to pick it up, but I'm much less excited than I was at first, <laughs> unfortunately. So real quick, I want to talk about something that I'm definitely not getting. And I saw a review today from Hope Mess Tom that cemented my decision. I will link that video below because it's the best review of that palette that I've seen so far. And I will say I was already leaning towards not picking it up, but those three shimmers, these sort of special shimmers, absolutely had my attention. I don't know. I also like the cooler tone leading mattes. I, I liked the look of the palette overall. However, after watching that review, I realized that those three special shimmers are not actually that special. And it also reminded me <laughs> that if you're looking for that wet look ethereal formula that was in the last palette you don't even have to go indie i mean i think indie does it best like i know tom mentioned ice blink from shine by sd but I was reminded that the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude has some very similar shades in a much better formula. And actually today, what I have on my eyes is a combination of that mixed with the Fenty Diamond Balm. So you could get a better etherealized formula <laughs> from Sephora on sale at a cheaper price starting out. So if you are like me and just super attracted to that very wet look shine, I mean that just makes me happy. <laughs> I bought the original Etherealize just for those three shimmers. I totally understand that. There are other options. You can get the same feeling for a better value. Obviously the Natasha Denona costs about the same, but for me that palette is so much more useful just because the formula is infinitely better. So I did want to mention that. I already went on a rant about the Patrick Ty eye duos, so I'm not going to revisit that. But needless to say, that should be on my skip list and probably everybody else's palette that I'm personally skipping this year. And I, I don't necessarily think that everybody should, but if you have multiple hourglass palettes that you're happy with, I'm personally skipping on this year's. I think the packaging is beautiful, but I think they're going to come out with more next year <laughs> and they might speak to me more. Having at least two of these in my collection that I use very often, I don't feel like I need more. I didn't feel like these brought anything new to the table. It's still one of my favorite formulas, so I don't discourage other people from picking them up if they're shades that really seem like they'll be your best fit, but I don't think there's anything very unique about this year's that means that you should go out on a limb and try them if you're happy with the ones you have. And finally, I am skipping on the Sephora sets. <laughs> None of them jumped out at me as having a good enough value for me to justify them in my collection. I think that would be different if I did find one that if I added, if I did the math, and I added everything together and the value exceeded me purchasing those products separately on their own, then I would do it. But this year, that just didn't happen for me. So I am skipping the Sephora favorite sets. And yeah, I think that is everything. The only thing I didn't mention the first time around, actually in my original recommendations video that I meant to mention, was this from Sephora brand. So this is the 30% off everything from Sephora brand for everyone, for the entire sale. So I did in other videos briefly talk about their eyeshadow singles. I think those are really high quality. I don't need any more of those, especially not with the collection of indies that I have, but if you're looking to just dip your toe in eyeshadow singles, I think the formula is great. As long as you don't mind them possibly arriving broken, <laughs> almost every one that I've gotten from them has been broken, but they're soft enough that you can just press them back in. So I don't discourage people from trying those. I think they're a great price, and I think their pro brushes are phenomenal. 
Outside of that, my favorite thing is their daily brush cleaner. I like this because it's gentle. If I was a makeup artist or if I was really more concerned about killing bacteria in my brushes, I would stick with Cinema Secrets or any of the alcohol-based cleansers. But since I have a mixture of natural and synthetic hair brushes, I like to reach for something that's just going to be gentle enough on everything in between washings. So I try to deep clean my brushes at least once a month, but in between I will reach for the daily brush cleaner spray because this is gentle. This would not be great for disinfecting because it is alcohol free, but it does a really good job getting color out. I also have a switch, so when I am doing my makeup on a daily basis. I'm using the same brushes over and over again and I'm just wiping them off either on a microfiber towel or if they're natural hair brushes I use a microfiber towel. If they're synthetic I will use a switch and that genuinely does a good job but every week or so I like to get them a little bit cleaner than that so a couple of spritzes of this has never done me dirty. This has never ruined any of my brushes which I have definitely ruined brushes with brush cleaner before <laughs> so I'm happy to report on that I just it's gentle it's effective it's a great spray I have a full bottle of it from the last sale I don't need another one but highly recommend that as well so that's everything in my cart for now that's everything that I'm definitely purchasing round one once the sale goes live I will pop back on here and talk about how I did you know these are the things that I know for sure that I'm getting but I will do an update about all the stuffs on my loves list and how I'm doing with that, once anything comes in, if I'm returning it, how much I spent, all of that will be coming up soon. I try to get at least a portion of my reviews out before the sale is totally over. So I don't think I'll be doing a separate Halloween video, <laughs> probably mostly because this year I just, I didn't have a very organized costume. I knew like three months ago that I wanted to be Chapel Roan, but I had a ridiculously difficult time picking a look. <laughs> She has so many to choose from and genuinely it's way more fun for me to focus on the makeup than it is the outfit. So I sort of left the outfit to last minute and then I had trouble finding stuff that I wanted and stuff that I felt comfortable in. Like they actually have some really cute stuff on Amazon, but I don't know, I'm not in my 20s anymore. So I didn't feel like I could pull all of that off. So I had more trouble picking out the actual costume, but I ended up pulling together is like sort of cute, but it could be better. And I have the hardest time with the wig. So the wig is more orange than red, wasn't the perfect color, was cute enough for a cheap wig, but I'm having the hardest time getting it to stay on my head. So I guess because of all that, I'm less than thrilled. I will be dressing the dogs up as Batman and Robin, and I'm mostly looking forward to that. And I'm just doing Halloween for the pictures. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> it would be a different story if we were, but because we're not even going out to dinner, we're not even doing anything for Halloween other than answering the doorbell. I don't don't think I'm gonna make a whole video about it but I will definitely make a short. I'm definitely still dressing up and I've done a few trial runs with the makeup and I did have fun with that. I absolutely did so I'll talk about what I've used and I will put it on my face and I will upload a short. Outside of that you probably I probably won't be able to film another video until next week and I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a whole video dedicated to the new Blend Bunny and Robert Welsh palette it's kind of on the fence because again that's the type of thing like it's been out for a while now so if you were really curious you've probably already made your mind up and seen reviews so I don't know how interested in that people would be but I'm either going to do a dedicated video or I'm just going to wait to the end of the year when I do my indie palette roundups and talk about it then so I'm up in the air about that but regardless I'll be getting something in the mail from Sephora <laughs> so expect some type of review next week probably a little lighter on videos next week but then the following week I'm hoping to be back on schedule at least two videos a week one a little bit longer one a little bit shorter and yeah that's kind of my game plan getting ready for the yearly roundups and getting ready for busy season <laughs> so yeah I guess trying to do that while disassociating on the internet around November 5th um, 
terrifying trying to both do my part and disassociate so that I don't lose my mind. It's a, it's a tough balance to strike, but that's what we have to do these days <laughs> in the 2020s. Anyway, I really hope that you're having a fabulous day wherever you are. I love you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.